Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to Master Plan Tycoon. This is a brand new resource management game that just released as of March 9th. It actually originated as a game jam idea, mixing a node editor with a visually minimalistic resource management simulation. It's one of those games that's really easy to get into, but gets increasingly complex the more you progress. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. The game is developed by Bureau Braven and published by Raven Age Games and DeYoYo Games, who, by the way, happen to be the sponsor for today's video. A big thank you for that. If you guys like what you see and you want to learn more about Master Plan Tycoon, Tycoon, there will of course be a link in the description down below. So let me show you how this game is going to work. In a lot of ways, it's actually going to be very reminiscent of other production and management games you've seen on the channel before, but broken down to a very simple visual appeal that has the exact same mechanics, just represented in a different way. So let me give you an example, right? We need to start producing planks. These are a very key resource for constructing other buildings, other nodes, right? Well, we have a bunch of trees here represented in green. How are we going to turn these into planks? Very simple. We're going to go to our building menu. We're going to go to planks here. It shows us a production chain. We're going to start by placing down a lumber camp. The input here is trees on the overworld, which are then going to get chopped down, and that becomes the output. Then we need to convert that tree into planks at a sawmill. So we go ahead and place you here. We speed this along like so. One more second, and boom. Then we're going to be hooking up the output from the lumber camp to the input for the sawmill. And the exact same thing for the plank output into our storage yard. What you can see here is the tree gets delivered, the sawmill is going to go to work for at least a little while, and then it's going to deliver these planks. This is the exact same type of system you're familiar with in other games, just broken down to almost a systems engineering workflow chart. Kind of cool. Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for stone. There's a mountain down here. I'm going to place down a quarry. We're going to get that thing built up, then hook up that output to the storage, and boom, now we're producing both planks and stone. And in the top left, you can see these are actually some key building materials. Because if we go to our building menu, you can see that, for example, every quarry costs me two planks. So we need to be producing a lot of this in order to progress in the game. Now, we're supposed to also produce some food. That is also going to be important for different reasons. Let's go ahead and place down a fishery where it is recommended, and then hook this thing up. Now, the game is saying, well, we told you to place it here. However, if you do this, there's not a lot of space to put other things. So maybe move this elsewhere. Not a problem. You just click, and you drag, and boom. There's absolutely no consequence for placing down a building, regretting its placement, and wanting to move it. In fact, that becomes a key aspect of the game. You'll be moving things around pretty frequently. Because these blue lines represent your logistics paths, right? But they cannot cross other nodes or other buildings. So for example, if I took this quarry and moved it, you can see it can't go right here. That would cross the path. But you can move it, let's say, right along over here, or up over here, or wherever that's going to be, right? So imagine, if you will, a game where you start having dozens of different inputs going into more complex production chains, all trying to feed into storage yards and working around each other, it starts getting a little bit hectic, and planning around all your different buildings is kind of an important important aspect of the game. Let's go ahead and start producing some water alongside with the fish. We're going to need both for reasons I'll explain in just a little bit, and get this thing hooked up. Now I'm going to wait to just generate a few resources before we move on. Now I should note that this game is not a sandbox. You're not going to get randomly generated worlds. It's more like you're going to have one big story level with missions within, and it's kind of a puzzle that you're trying to solve. So anyway, now that we've got all those resources, let's move on to the next tier of resources. The game is recommending I start producing bread. No problem. We go to our building menu, and you can see instead of tier 0 basic buildings, we now have access to tier 1 buildings, including the farm where I can start growing some grain. So I'm going to use up some planks and some stone, and we'll simply place that here. And then we will also place down a quick mill, and we need another one of these wells placed down right over this way. It doesn't have to necessarily be in these locations. This is just the game kind of giving you some help. It'll, it'll stop hand-holding at some point. Now, we also need to place down a bakery, taking the grain, which is being milled down at the mill, into meal, and the water, and that's going to create bread, right? So let's go ahead and place down a bakery. Now, here's the thing you'll notice. There's this big round circle around our storage yard, and this is just outside of it. That's going to be a problem in just a moment. First, we'll go ahead and hook these things up like so. And what you're going to notice if you click on the bakery here is we have something here called maintenance. The people who are working in this node, in this building, require some fish and some water periodically. However, because this building is not in range of a storage yard, then it doesn't actually have any access to these resources and therefore it's not going to work. The solution to this is either to move the storage yard or perhaps move the bakery in a position where it's within the circle, or alternatively we can go ahead and just 
place down another storage yard. And that's actually important to understand because once resources are dropped off in a storage yard, they can teleport between storage yards. This is actually a good way of banking your resources to then go pull them up elsewhere and not have to worry about your management chains going like all the way to the other side of the continent, right? That would get a little bit hectic. Now, I was just saying a minute ago that the whole game is basically one level, right? But within that are different sub-levels. They're called missions. So first, let me go ahead and take this bread. We're going to hook this up to something called a brick mission, and I'll show you that in a second. Let's also take the stone and move that up over here. And I'm going to get rid of this logistical path to the storage yard because right now it's going to split my stone 50-50. But I want a lot of this to be sent to the brick mission. So we'll go ahead and remove this just by clicking on it, and now all stone will get sent up over here. So we're on the master continent right now. It even says that up here in the very top of my screen. If we go to the brick mission and click on this though, it's going to take me to a different world within the world, right? So here we are. Right now, we are delivering both bread and stone. And you can see that these are outputs from our input from the master world, right? Now I'm being told that I need to create my own production chains to make bricks and then deliver that here at the output, which then goes back to the master world and we can start using bricks elsewhere if we so desire. This is important because this is the only area where clay is located. So this is going to come up, I think, six or so times. Different resources you otherwise would not be able to access, but it does mean you have to start providing for the needs of all the different, let's call them colonies, that are within our master world. So let's go ahead and start setting up our brick production. I need to place down a quick storage yard, which is going to be a convenient place to drop off the stone and the bread that is being delivered to this area. So we'll do something kind of like this. And just like before, start producing some planks and other key resources. Now, while we're producing all the key resources I need, we apparently need to get some clothes. No problem. Let's go back to tier one resources and we need to place down a sheep farm and then we need to get ourselves a sewing workshop. Now, just like with the farms, these have a radius around them. We'll have the sheep kind of growing and then getting sheared, just like when you're growing crops and then you need to go ahead and start taking it down. Let's place down a quick little sewing workshop right over here. No reason to have extremely long production chains and logistic lines if you don't need to, though technically we could place this like really far away if we wanted to. I I'm not sure why you would, but you totally could do that. Let's go ahead and hook this up over here and then drop off clothes in the storage yard. There we go, that should do the job. Now, if we're gonna be mining up some clay, the game is warning me that a special maintenance item they're gonna need is not just clothing, but they're also gonna want some beer. No problem, let's go back to our tier one resources, place down the farm we've already seen, plus a well to get some water, and bada boom, we'll have ourselves a brewery. And now we are producing some beer, taking one grain in water and turning it into two beer every 45 seconds as long as enough resources exist. Though do note you have to have that maintenance still being met, and I already knew that was going to be the case, hence why I placed down a well in a fishery. The game didn't even have to tell me to do that, it's just something you kind of need to figure out. Okay, so with all of that taken care of and the maintenance needs being met, let's go ahead and start working on those bricks. I'm going to place down a quick clay pit over here. Accidentally missed the box ever so slightly, but it doesn't matter, that's completely fine. And then we'll go ahead and place down a quick little brick factory as long as it's within the range of the storage yard. That's going to be fine. Hook these up and place the bricks in the output over here. And boom. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the master world. And we will be seeing some bricks appearing over time. Let's go ahead and drag that over to our storage yard. And now, in the master world, bricks are going to be produced. At some point, we might need a lot more bricks, in which case you can always go right back to the brick mission, add in more clay pits, more brick factories, and just keep expanding this. That's completely fine. However, back on the Master World, we still don't have access to things like our beer and our clothes. We're only outputting bricks from this special mission. So, just like before, we're going to go ahead and start producing that here on the Master Island as well. With all of that done, we're moving on to the next round of maintenance buildings that we're going to need. Time to start making some sausages, because bread is not going to work at the higher levels. So now we've unlocked Tier 2. Let's go ahead and start working on that as well. We need more farms for more grain plus some water. Send those to the pig farms and then send them to the butcher. So we'll use the same well we had before, hooking that up to both the bakery, the brewery, and the pig farm plus some extra grain. That's going to get me some pigs and then we'll have the pigs turn into sausages and then send that over to the storage yard just like so. Yeah, lots of crossing paths going on over here. I'm trying to be somewhat space efficient. You can spread these out a lot more if you want to. But longer travel time between different logistical paths means it takes longer for more resources to get delivered. They can't send more than one per line at a time. So technically, a lot of short paths with lots of different storage banks in between is probably the most efficient way to go. But this, in all of its chaos, looks way more fun. So that's why I'm doing that. 
Okay, sausages are taken care of. Ah, but there is something else we're gonna need because soon we're gonna move on to the next mission, and that is for steel. But they don't wear basic clothes, they wear overalls. So not only do we have to have some sheep and then turn that into felt, but we also need to plant down some cotton and get that all in a cotton mill to get furs. And the furs will be able to create our overalls. So that's a couple more production chains to set up. So let's go ahead and start planting down some cotton over here at the plantation, getting that set up, and then send all of this plus some felt to the fur factory, and we'll get this hooked up just like everything else. Boom. Now, if you think this is starting to look kind of complicated, don't worry. You haven't seen anything yet. It's going to get a heck of a lot more interesting as time goes on. Now, one thing you should probably be aware of, though, uh, you know, it's right now we're not having any issues as far as meeting our maintenance needs, right? We only have so many nodes already placed down. There's only so much bread, water, fish, etc. being consumed, so we're not having any issues. But you can imagine, as you start unlocking Tier 3, 4, 5 different types of buildings, right, you'll eventually have to start going back and shoring up your needs on the basics as well as you start having more population than you're actually able to provide for with your current infrastructure. So you're constantly building up a pyramid of tier 0 and 1 buildings to support everything above it. That's going to be a key aspect of the game as well. Oh look, moonshine, huh? Okay, yeah, we can do that. Things are getting a little bit tight, however. I'm going to go ahead and place down another one of these storage yards, let's say over here or something. There's really no downside that I can think of to placing down lots of storage yards, and they're relatively cheap. They only cost you a couple of planks and some stone. As long as you got enough of that going around, you really could just place a whole bunch of storage yards all over the place and cut down on these lines. That's a more efficient way of playing the game. Again, I just think this looks cooler. Let's take a look at something, for example. Look at this. The sugarcane plantations and the potato farms are not working. Why? Because we're technically not producing enough bread. What's wrong with the bread? Well, we don't have enough meal coming in, which means not enough grain is getting down over here. Let's go ahead and disable the grain being sent to the pigs to make sure more grain gets sent over here to the mill. And since we have an excess of grain over here, I'll just rearrange this like this to make sure we are definitely delivering plenty of grain over here to keep our sausages going, but also make sure we're producing enough of this bread. The bread, however, is a problem because we're not producing enough fish over here either. Yup, yup, yup. See how it's starting to get a bit more complex? Easily fixed, though. Just go ahead and place down an extra fishery, and we'll start sending more over here. If you're ever worried that you're going to start running out of key resources, an easy thing to do is just click on the storage yard itself. It's broken down by the different tiers of resources, and you can see here, we were completely out of fish. So that was probably a key to me that I probably need to increase my production. Doing fine on things like water, that's no issue. But fish? Yeah, that was a problem. We can see over here that we have no surplus of meal being stored. Now, that's partly because no flour meal is being sent to a storage yard. It's all going directly to a bakery. If I wanted to have some spare uh, farms and mills going directly to a storage yard so I can use that later, that may not even necessarily be a bad idea. Okay, now just as before, I need to send a whole bunch of resources over to this place, the Steel Mission. But they require a lot more. We need bricks, we need bread, we need beer, and we need clothes. The good news is, because the storage yards act as a form of bank that can teleport resources around, everything is accessible directly from here. So all I have to do is take this one storage yard, and hook it up to all four locations, and we should be able to meet those needs. So who's ready to go looking for steel? Me, 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 me. Let's go ahead and jump into the next round of missions. Oh, look at this. There's more stuff. Not only do we have some trees, we have some stone. We've also got coal deposits, and we've got key iron deposits. Yep, there's a lot we need to get set up over here, including a lot of the basics. So first things first, let's go ahead and set ourselves up some storage yards, produce some planks, etc., etc. Now, unfortunately, we can't just send any resources we want into an individual mission. That's going to be one of the challenges. We can only bring along the brick, the bread, the beer, and the clothes. So if I want some of the basic maintenance buildings I'm going to need for the higher tier stuff, we need to start producing our own sausages, moonshine, and overalls. But in order to do that, we also need to produce some fish. So we need to get some water, we need to get some beer, we need some clothes, we need everything! So we're basically almost starting over on this particular mission just to get steel so we can send that back to the main world. And there we go, that should just about do it. You can see we had to place down a lot more nodes, but now we do have a fully functioning economy within the steel mission, so we can finally start working on the resources I want to send back to the master world. And if this is seeming a little complicated, oh boy, just you wait. I know for a fact we've got several more tiers of buildings to go through, not to mention a research system, but I'll get back to that in just a second. I gotta say, I think the aesthetic appeal of this game, the minimalist style, is really quite fascinating, right? Because it's taking the exact same 
same mechanics you have for almost all the other types of resource management games you normally would play, but it's breaking it down into a simple workflow. Otherwise, it's exactly the same mechanics and concept. Very, very interesting. In fact, <laughs> weirdly enough, it actually reminds me of a software I used back in college when I was an engineering student. If you ever use a software called LabVIEW, it's a mathematical node editing system that's actually very similar to this. You place down different blocks for inputs, different functions, you tie them together, and it spits out different answers. And you can even have uh, node editing systems within a more complex node, so you have lots of different equations. It's kind of cool. This works almost exactly the same way, but it's all resource production based. Really interesting. Really, really unique. Anyway, let's go ahead and start producing some of the good stuff. We need some iron mines. We need to get some furnaces. Let's go to steel beams and place some of these down. Do I want to get myself an additional one of these um, storage yards? Probably. Let's go ahead and place you down over here to start. We've already got coal being produced, so I'm not worried about this right now. I do, however, need to be getting things like a furnace. So I'm delivering some coal, I'm delivering some iron, I'm producing some steel. Now here's the thing, there are other ways of getting coal besides just using these deposits that we have on this map, right? Because these coal mines do require a fair bit of maintenance. There are cheaper options available, but we have to research them first. So let me go back to the master island over here. We're gonna click on this new little button that just popped up on the bottom left. This is for research. We can see here a new type of building we can research. It's going to take 15 trees out of our storage yard so I've already been setting some of those aside in order to get this research, and that's just going to take a couple of minutes. But what's going to happen now is we can get some trees from the lumber yards, then send them to a charcoal kiln, and that's another way of producing some coal. In addition to new construction projects, we can also research some upgrades. For example, if we use some of the bread and beer we've got stored, we can start increasing the resource transfer rate so everything moves faster. Or taking a whole bunch of other resources I've already been storing up, we can increase the production speed of farms and plantations. Let's go ahead and research that too. So you can imagine this starts getting more and more interesting as we have to start picking and choosing lots of different things to research and store up a lot of different resources so we have access to more stuff. So jumping back to the steel mission, I'm gonna go over here and instead of a coal mine, let's place down one of these charcoal kilns and we'll go ahead and start tossing all that excess coal into the storage yard. So with that all taken care of, we're gonna have the steel work set up so we can take some steel, turn that into steel beams and then drop that right back off at the storage. All right, now all we should need to do is start sending those resources back to the master world. Rather than try to get all the logistics set up, an easiest thing to do, probably go ahead and set up another one of these storage yards right over here. And we can just quickly teleport the resources out of here. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the next tier of production. Tier 3 is unlocked. Steak, milk cans, vests, and windows. Let's start with this steak. I'm gonna need a lot of cow farms. Now, I do want to be placing down a steakhouse, but that takes some steel beams. Easy thing to forget. We may be outputting steel and stuff over here now, but until I actually get this into a storage yard, there's not a whole lot I can do with it. So let's go ahead and set up another storage setup like so, and then get these all hooked up, and bada bada boom. Now I'm ready for some tasty steak. So all these cows are going to be going ahead and getting slaughtered. That's going to produce both steak and leather. Next thing we need to build is some way of getting milk cans. Now, I've already got milk being produced at the cow farms. We don't have any cans. That takes steel, and it takes coal. Makes a lot of sense, then, to place these close to a storage yard where I already have a lot of those resources being delivered. Hook it up like so, and we are off to the races. Or even better, hook the cans directly up to a milk farm like so. And if we move this just around a little bit, can we get milk? Not quite move things, there we go. And now we can get these hooked up to the storage yard. Much better. With those needs met, let's go ahead and start producing ourselves some sand. I know that's something I'm gonna need in order to make myself some glass. Mix that with some trees, we get windows, which is going to be another one of those key uh, building resources, just like with the bricks, with the steel beams, etc. So we'll place down a quick little sand mine, let's say over here. I'm sure the cows are not going to mine, though obviously there's not as much room for them. I think that's gonna be completely fine, and we'll just toss it into the storage yard like so. However, while the game is trying to tell me to work on glass, what it's actually doing is letting me see where I am missing something important. For example, we don't have vests. That is something that I need to start manufacturing. So, let's go back to vests, and the steakhouse is already producing some of the leather I need. I just need to tan this, and then turn that into vests at the leather workshop. 
So we'll hook things up kind of like this, again placing down some extra storage yards because if I've got enough planks and stone there's really no downside, and having a lot of nice short little logistic chains to go ahead and drop these off. Now we've got vests, now we're producing sand. So let's go ahead and place down a glass maker. I've got a couple of lumber camps over here with the purpose of planting and chopping down just some simple trees, right? We'll start sending the sand over here that away, and then the window maker can go right over here taking some of the glass we're producing, plus these trees, and hopefully making me a lot of windows. And there we go. Now that we have that hooked up and we finish up all of the tier three buildings, this is a very good time to go ahead and take a quick moment and make sure that everything else is looking good downstream in the chain. So tier zero, we're looking fine. Plenty of resources across the board. Tier one, starting to fall a bit behind in terms of grain and bread, and also completely out of things like clothes. That's gonna come back to bite me as it starts shutting down all of my top level buildings and just kind of cascading down the tree. So before I continue with anything, uh, I highly recommend that we go ahead and set up some fixes for all of those key resources. That's looking a little bit better. Starting to produce a little bit more bread, starting to produce a bit more clothes. Still using a lot of that stuff up, but I think we're preventing ourselves from falling too far behind. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next bunch of goodness. We need to get ourselves some cattle farms, some red pepper farms, and some canneries for the tier four buildings to get myself some of these canned goods. There we go. Doesn't need to be anything too complicated. We're already producing some of the cans and stuff, so we don't need to set that up any further. Just go ahead and pull it from storage. Get some cattle, get some red peppers. Boom, canned food is now done. Now we need to get some boots. That's another key maintenance resource we're gonna need for the next round of buildings. Already producing some vests and stuff using the tanned leather, but um, the tanned leather has other uses. So if we go over here to tier four and get the boots up and running, same thing with tanneries but then a boot factory instead of a leather workshop. Ooh, but we're starting to run out of things like beer and bread as we continue building some of this stuff out. Yup, 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 gotta go back down to tier one and start building out more stuff. And now for the fun part, we get to start making some Hawaiian. Now let's go back to tier four and we can start planting down some vineyards. Also, we've already been producing the glass we needed the glass maker, so as long as we can divert that into storage instead of sending all of it to the window makers, we can start making some wine glasses to go right alongside that at the winery. So let's hook up some of these grapes plus some glass into the winery where we are already hooked up to a storage yard and boom, now we just sit back and wait. Well, hold up, why is the winery not working? Because we do not have enough steak. That's fine, I actually placed down another cow farm over here for a reason. So we can send this to the steakhouse and start producing more of that steak and keep things running. Gotta keep checking this periodically. Make sure that we don't run out of anything absolutely critical, everything, otherwise everything comes grinding to a halt. In fact, we're starting to run out of sausages. Alrighty, we gotta do that again. Now before we continue, let's just go ahead and pause for a quick second and take a look at this world that we have been creating. Yep, that's a lot of nodes, all being connected in some way. Lots of inputs, lots of outputs, all working towards some grandiose goal. Telling you, honestly, it's such an unusual way of viewing a game, but it totally makes sense. I think that's one of the things I like about it. There's such a logic to this. Anyway, so now we start working on ships so we can travel to different islands. Yep, you heard me right. Let's go ahead and start producing some rope with the cotton plantation first. And then follow that up by making some sails, which also requires some additional cotton, plus some of that rope we are making at the sail makers. And then last but not least, we need to start making some anchors. Taking the steel that I'm already gathering up back at the steel mission, and placing those in an anchor workshop. And that should be everything we need to set sail. So now we have two missions. We need to store up a whole bunch of cotton balls, and also, we have a limestone mission. Where are you? There you are, all the way over here. Rum? You want me to produce rum? Well, 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 that means we've got access to tier five structures. Cheese, suits, concrete. But shockingly, none of that is rum. Instead, we need to move the map all the way over here where there is apparently a port and also a port that requires these cotton balls to go off to wherever we're gonna go. So let's go ahead and set up another storage yard right over here and drop that off like so. Now I just gotta wait until some of these cotton balls are ready. There we go, that should be 12. Okay, so let's go ahead and wait for this to finish up. We're gonna go to the mission though, and over here we can see, lo and behold, another port where I can place down a storage bin like so, 
and pick up those exact same cotton balls. It's just gonna take three minutes to get around. We have some new things, by the way. Bamboo planks exist in the top left instead of regular planks. Oh my, very different forests. We need to get bamboo plantations and bamboo factories. The good news is they work exactly the same way as you are used to, so this should be old hat for us. Here we go, we'll go ahead and get some of the basics set up over here, and while it just builds up a huge stockpile, I can go back to the master world over here. And if we want to go down to the limestone mission, we can at least take a look at what's going on. Oh my, what is this? It looks like a former colony or settlement has been completely messed up. There's a bunch of pre-existing buildings with a lot of different resources that could be useful to us but a lot of missing steps in between, whether that be the logistics or actual structures. So if we're gonna make this one work, um, we've gotta, you know, get this place fixed, tip top shape. Not a problem, we know what to do. We go ahead and move a bunch of this stuff. We get some storage set up over here, move the brick factory like so. Get this set up down over, well, come on. Get this set up down over here, get some trees, some clay, some bricks. Boom, and we also need to get ourselves some stone. Okay, that at least gets some of the basics up and running. Then we need to get ourselves some sheep, which we can do over, let's say, like this. Get some clothes. Okay, at least that's going to be some of the basics taken care of. And let's not forget some more fish and water, which should get all of this up and running. And we'll come back to all of this in a second. I see enough stuff for some uh, moonshine. I see almost everything we need for bakeries, breweries, sausages, etc. What we're lacking is a lot of water and other important resources. Yup, yup, yup. This is a puzzle we have to solve in a very efficient way. But if we can do so, uh, there is going to be an output of concrete. That is something we'll be able to work on at tier 5. We've also apparently already unlocked tier 6, meat pies, glasses, and steam engines. But that's not all. If we go back to the islands, we still have tier 5 with all the stuff we're used to, and a whole bunch of new tier 6 buildings. Fried banana, the rum we're looking for, ponchos, rope, bricks, uh, cow- cow- I have no idea what that is and how you say it. Cowchuk. I'm pretty sure that's how you say that, and if I recall correctly, that is a form of rubber, right? Kind of natural growing rubber? Fascinating. Okay, well, I would like to start making some delicious chocolate-covered fried bananas. Heck yeah. Anyway, putting that all aside while we've gathered up some key resources, um, let's see, we should be producing bricks. Why are we not? Because we don't have bread and beer. Fair enough. That means we need to go deal with this one first. So let's go ahead and take the grain and stuff. We've already got ourselves some bakeries, some breweries, but I don't have a way of getting water over here easily. So the easiest solution I can think of is to set up a storage yard and then have some extra water being delivered up here, which we're already kind of doing. Um, so I guess I don't need to mess with this too much, but we'll just take the water directly and toss it in like so. Plus, we need a quick mill, like so, and boom. That is a very simple solution. And now we'll be able to start producing most of the stuff we're looking for. Let's also make sure we get... I can't get ourselves the butchers yet. I need to first deliver this bread and beer. See, this is again where it's kind of like a bit of a puzzle here. Because in order to get the bricks, I need to have finished up these production chains over here first. So I can't jump forward. Let's go ahead and drop this stuff off. And that should be enough to go ahead and get these guys up and running. That's the clay again, so now we've got that all taken care of. We're gonna see bricks coming in. Perfect. While we wait on that, we can jump back over here to the islands and work on sugar canes and a rum distillery. Yes. Now we seem to be a little bit stuck at the moment, so this settlement that was abandoned is currently being rebuilt and we're just waiting on some steel beams. Over on the islands, I want to be building up some rope, but I need to do some research for that. For that to work, I need to somehow get cotton balls and rum back to the master. But without the ropes, I'm not sure how we're going to be getting the rum back to the master island. So, how do we make this one work? Great question. I'm kind of hoping at some point it becomes more available as I work down this particular mission tree. Uh, let's see, tannery, leather workshop. Sure, 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 we can get all that working, that's fine. Well, it seems like at the very least I have found something new. Limestones, untouched, and ready to do something with them. So where would I find limestone? Is it these things? The answer is yes, that's exactly what it is. However, in order to even get this running, we first need to find some rum, and we also need to get suits and cheese. So basically, all of the tier 5 maintenance is required in order to make that work. Ooh, boy. 
And you can imagine that's gonna be no small task here. Not only do we have to get more cows to get curds to then get cheese, but the suits are gonna acquire linseed, which then goes into linen to get a tailor's shop. And then the concrete itself is the most complex one we've seen yet. Limestone and water to make cement, iron and coal to get in the furnace. You put the two together, you get concrete. Ooh. Well, as fun as that would be, I do think that makes for a very good stopping point for this particular video before we move on to Tier 5 and Tier 6 buildings. But you get a pretty good idea of how Master Plan Tycoon works. It gets more and more complicated, more and more impressive and intricate, and the web of logistics and networks of different goods and production chains. I mean, really, if you're the kind of person who likes doing production chain types of uh, games, this is really for you. It's just got a minimalist art style, which if you're into that, I think this works pretty darn well, and it's smooth as silk. As a reminder, if you guys were interested in what you've seen, and this is something you'd like to pick up for yourself, well, of course, there is going to be a link in the description down below. Once again, a big thank you to the publishers for today's sponsorship. I had a lot of fun with this. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell for all future content, and I will see you guys next time.